In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create closed caption text in Articulate Storyline. And you can use this for any type of audio narration you have inserted or you can use the uh, video that you may have inserted on the slide. A couple things you'll need. One is uh, you'll need your text file. So in this particular case I, I had a blog post where I showed how to create uh, free captions. Uh, what you're going to get is you're going to get the timing. So we have our start time here. And then you're going to get the text that should appear on that caption at that particular time. And you can see in this particular demo we've got uh, it starts at zero seconds, the next one comes on at five seconds, and the next one comes on at seven seconds, and so forth. Now the key is you want the, ta the captions to go on. And then you've got to figure well how do I get the captions to go off and then have the next caption go on. And that's actually really simple in Storyline because we're going to use a single variable. So let's look at what we have first and then um, we'll create one from scratch. So here I have a, a video. I've got my caption box you can see here. And then if we look at the triggers panel you can see I only did three of the captions. So let's go ahead and preview this and see how those three work. So we've got a little start button. We're going to start the video. The first right, caption so here. let me show you how to create an army of overhead people. So the first thing we do is just create the person. It's really pretty basic. So you can see the person here. All right, so what you saw was quickly three captions change. What's nice with Storyline is I only need to create one variable and then I just keep it timed to change based on the uh, timeline. So let's go ahead and create it from scratch. So first thing I need to do is I have my video. This could be an audio file. At this point it really doesn't even matter if it's on the screen because everything's going to be based on the timeline and you're going to have that. Uh, you're going to have this right here. You're going to have your document to work off of. All right, so what we want to do first is let's go ahead and create a variable. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to create my variable. And you can see I already have one called Caption. We're going to just create one called Caption1. So I'm going to create my new variable. This is going to be a text variable, so I have that here. I'm going to title this Caption1. And I have my text variable. And then right now the value is nothing, so we're going to hit OK. And we hit OK and that's basically it. Now what we want to do is have a trigger that changes the value of that text variable based on the timeline. So let's go ahead and create a new trigger. So what do we want to do? We want to adjust the variable. So that's going to be down here at the bottom. So adjust variable. We select our variable. In this case we're going to select the one we just created called Caption1. And what we want to do is we want to change the value and we'll put some text in here. I'm just going to put placeholder text. So I'll just type placeholder just so you can see how it works. And then we're going to say when, and we're going to say when the timeline reaches a certain time. Now if you had cue points you could use cue points, but it's actually, that doesn't help us because the SRT file goes by time. And so we're going to just go ahead and keep it at zero seconds. Hit OK. And now you can see we've got a trigger that says set caption one, which is going to be our caption variable, equal to whatever the text is. And I can just copy and uh, paste new text in here, and then I have to modify the time. But it's just one variable or one trigger that we're going to keep using over and over again. So let's go ahead and put a reference point for our variable because we want to be able to see it on the screen. So we're going to go to insert. I can insert a text box. I'll just drag it across the screen. Now if you know how to add your variables, you just do percentage sign, the name of the variable, and percentage sign. Uh, for those who don't know how to do it, we're just going to make sure you have your text box open. We're going to go to Insert. We're going to choose Reference. Reference is going to show all the variables. We're going to choose Caption 1. Hit OK. And now you can see the references in here. I'm going to make this a little larger. So now we want to format the box. So we'll make the text white and we're going to make it larger. I'll center it. And the other thing I want to do is I want to fill it with this color. So, and I'm just going to have it run the entire length of the video. Now you can place it wherever you want to. A lot of people put it right on the bottom. That's okay. Now I also kind of like to make this box somewhat transparent. So you can just change the transparency on it. Um, so it just looks a little nicer. All right, so now we've got our caption here. 
Now, the one thing to keep in mind with the text boxes when you're using variables, I, sometimes the text will change based on the, the box. So like this box is a fixed size. I can't I can't change the, the height or width of it. Um, let me go backwards here. And when I have a variable in here, we don't know how much how many characters you're going to have in the variable. So this box is always going to change the text to fit within this size. So that's something we're going to have to plan on uh, when we're working on this. So let's go ahead. We've got our caption here. We've got our placeholder at zero seconds. Uh, that's going to come in. We can just preview this and we'll see that it should say placeholder. All right, so let me show you how to create an army of overhead. Okay, so we've got our placeholder text. Now what we want to do this first one, let's look at our text box. The first one at zero seconds should have this text in here. So I'm just going to copy this text. We're going to copy it and we're just going to come in here and place paste it in here. So that one's good to go. So if we preview this, it starts. All right, so let off. me show you how to create an army. And of then it's not going to change until we actually so have another trigger that changes that value. It's real so what we're going to do now is copy this. So just copy the trigger and paste it. And we can come over to our line here. The next one's going to be five seconds. We're going to go ahead and copy this text. And um, come over here, just double click on this. It's a lot easier. And just put your new value in here. That's your new text. And that was it. What was that at five seconds? We hit OK. And then I'm going to, I can again, I can copy and paste this. And then we're going to do a couple more here. Um, and if I wasn't explaining, it's actually a lot faster. So we'll go at the seven second mark here. So let's go ahead and do this. This will be seven seconds. And we are going to add the new text in, in here. And then um, copy and paste that. Let's do the last one that was nine seconds. And um, we'll go, oops. Make sure we copy and pay. Uh, come on. Let's copy this. So this was going to be at nine seconds. I double click. I can change this to nine seconds. And I'm going to do that. So you can see it's actually pretty straightforward. Um, you just have one variable and you're just always changing it, triggering it based on the timeline. So you don't have to keep adding new text boxes that come on and off the screen. So let's go ahead and preview this. So what should happen is at 0, 5, 7, and 9 seconds, we should see the text box change. You'll also notice that the text is going to be uh, changing in its size because it's going to try to auto fit it. And I'll show you how we fix that here in a second. All right, so let me show you how to create an army of overhead people. So the first thing we do is just create the person. So you can it's see really the size basic. difference. So you can see the person here is just made up of a few shapes. So let's do one from scratch. All right. So just, what we want to do to account for the size, we can create a starting value. So I'm just going to create another text box here. Let's just duplicate this one. Now what you need to do is find out which line of text is going to have the most text in it or the most characters. And so you're going to have this big list here and you're going to see it's probably going to be something about like this. You're not going to have 8 million characters. So you're probably going to have something like this. So I'm just going to copy this here and I'm going to paste this in here. And so if if this is the size of my box, right? If this is the size of my box, then the text needs to be um, small enough to fit in here. So my guess is if you go down here, you're probably going to get something at about 18 points or maybe 16 points that's going to work for you. So you can select your caption box and you could start with like just put it at we'll say put it at 16 points or well let's just do 18 points and see what happens. So we'll set it at 18. Now what happens is everything's going to be at 18 until it has to be auto sized. And so uh, it shouldn't change or if it does it should be very minimal in its change. So if we let's delete this box here. So if we preview this we can kind of see how this box looks. All right. right, so let me show you how to create an army of overhead people. So the first thing we do is just create. And the you can person. see that it's looks really much cleaner basic. now. 
So you can see the person here is just made up. Of so that's what you want to do. So just find out which which line is going to have the most text and try to uh, get it to fit across the screen and uh, it'll look just exactly the way you want it to look. So that's basically it. I mean, it's really a pretty straightforward process. You're going to have your SRT file. All you need to do is create that one trigger, the variable, and then that one trigger. And then anytime you want the ch text to change, you copy and paste the trigger, add your new text, and change the timeline, and uh, everything will be set. Hope that helps.